Right. Hello, world. Welcome to Loving Our Children. I'm Andrew Henderson. I'll be your host tonight. Uh, I really feel like this is going to be a great conversation. Um, I've been actually waiting to have this conversation since last week. <laughs> so I know it's going to be a great conversation. But tonight we'll be talking about parenting styles um, from a man's perspective. Um, there are a lot of families around the world uh, who have teenagers who have young kids and um, you know, fathers and mothers, they sometimes have like an issue raising a child because at some point the child um, finds out a way to you know, become the parent. <laughs> so uh, tonight we'll just be giving you different parent styles from a man's perspective. And what, uh, who I have on tonight is uh, Jamal Walden. Uh, Jamal is out of Maryland. And um, a few years ago, I, I, I lost my uncle, my only uncle in 2006. I lost him while I was in college. And um, with losing of, of the uncle, um, that's like losing wisdom, you know, because guys normally look up to their uncle for wisdom. And so when my uncle passed, I basically lost, you know, wisdom. And so I'll say when I got married in 2016, I gained three uncles. So God replaced what I lost times three. Um, and Jamal was one of the uncles that I gained. So um, how you doing tonight, Jamal? I'm doing wonderful. Okay, okay. It's great seeing you. Like I said, I've really been waiting to have this conversation um, since last week. So uh, let's just go ahead and get right into it. Um, so the first question I have, I have a list of questions and we'll, we'll cover all of them. Uh, the first question I have is, um, Give one word that describes your parenting style. Like if you could choose one word, what would you say describe your parenting style? I would say my parent style is more laid back, relaxed, you know, not overly aggressive, but I don't think I'm, you know, I'm not a pushover, but I'm just not a aggressive type person when it comes to parent. I just think you got to pay attention to what's going on before you, you know, jump out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for me, this one question, I actually thought about this one question for um, a few days. I was just really thinking about it. And what I see is that a lot of parents need to know what their parenting style is. Because if they know what their parenting style is, then they will see why or why not they may be having some issues with um, raising their children. And so when I finally thought about what my one word would be, I realized that my word of my parenting style is the source to all my problems. <laughs> and so my parenting style is playful. That's what I, I found out that I'm playful. So in a sense, I'm really a kid with my kids, <laughs> you know? And so, and so what happens is when I learned that my parenting style is playful, I said, wow, then I understand I, I've been overcompensating when I want to now switch and try to be um, aggressive and, you know, if the kids are acting up, I'm like, you know, go to bed or, or do this to them. They know me as playful. So if I raise my voice, you know, it might kind of scare them or whatnot, but then in their mind, they're still saying, well, he's playful. So they're not going to take me as serious, you know, as if um, I was just maybe um, aggressive or, you know, uh, intimidated or something like that, but they just do not take me serious at times. And um, because of my parenting style, they just get over a lot. And um, I've realized that just just coming into this this uh, this conversation. So uh, as a parent, um, wh wh where did you learn your parenting style from? I mean, just a combination of just a lot of the men and people that you you know you to grow up seeing. Because I mean, I grew up in a two-parent household, so you know what I saw and what some of my friends saw was a little bit different. I mean, a lot of my friends, they had single mothers and there was a difference because mothers and fathers don't raise the same. Fathers sometimes are more, you know, more sterner. They ain't as playful or as relaxed. Sometimes when a, a man is there, they don't really have to say a lot to get the same, you know, the result that a woman might have to do sometimes. And it's, it's, not, it's, it's no right, no wrong way, but each person's different. You know, some children need aggressiveness and some need, you know, laid back. It's just, you got to read each child differently and find out what they need and figure out how you're going to deal with them. That's actually a great answer because um, I, 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 I've known you for, for a few years now and I've seen your son 
um, actually I've seen him, you know, on his journey of going from a teenager to becoming a man. But I've never really paid attention to you um, as a parent, you know, in terms of how your interactions are, um, in terms of raising a teenager and, and, and into a man. I didn't really pay attention to that until this weekend. And it was something that happened with Prescott. I'll cover that in a minute. But um, what I've noticed about your son is he's always been, it seems like he's always been far, far past his years in terms of um, he's very mature and he's always been mature. And, um, and I've really never seen an interaction to where um, he's disrespected you or to where you had to like really raise your voice at him or anything. And so um, he's in the military, he's in the, um, the, the Marines. The Marines, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I went to a military school and we had all the branches at the Citadel and um, at the military school, the Marines was like the, 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 the Super Bowl of, of, of all the forces. And so people would be like, no, I'm not getting in the Marines because they're too disciplined or they're too strict or you have to be who you have to be almost cut from a certain type of cloth to even go into the Marines. So when people, so, so um, it, it reminded me of a scripture that I, um, I read from Jesus. Um, he was talking to, to, to his disciples and they were basically asking him, um, you know, really show me the, the father, like show me God. And Jesus said, look, you've been with me. And so if you've seen the, if you've seen the son, you see the father. You know, so a lot of guys, see your son and they know that he is cut from a certain cloth and it's something really different about him and that's an a testament to you so um my question is this this is the question i've really been waiting to ask you what did you do to my son prescott on saturday when he did not want to eat his food when he was being just irate and he was not listening to anyone um it normally takes five hours for him to eat me and Casimir got to play good cop, bad cop. And so I turn around, he's quiet. Next thing I know, he's sitting on your lap. He's eating his food and you were not being aggressive nor, nor, nor were you intimidating him because he hugged you at the end. So like, what, what was that? Can, can you explain to us like, what exactly did you do in that moment? I, well, I, I'm just one of the ones, I always believe children, they want discipline. They want somebody that's discerned and that's a lock in and pay them attention. And at that moment, it was just, you know, he didn't want to eat. So grabbing him and just sitting down from talking to him a little bit, letting him know, I ain't trying to bully you into it, but in the same right, I'm not trying to let you bully me into not doing it. So, you know, everybody's eating. You got to eat too. You want to be big and strong one day. So how do you become big and strong one day? How do you go from being a baby to being a young boy, to a young man, to a man? And, you know, sometimes just talking to him and, you know, trying to, you make it to a level where they can kind of somewhat understand you, but don't, you know, make them feel threatened. Because when a person feels threatened, they shut down one. Okay, okay. I just actually learned something right there because um, I've seen what, what, what I notice about him is he, when he gets around authority, um, he, uh, he, he understands authority. And so I guess he just fills people out, but he understands authority. So when he gets around my mom, he, the way that he acted around you, he acts with my mom. But when you see my mom, you automatically know she's authority. Um, he does that with one of his aunts, but when you see his aunt, you automatically know he's authority. I mean, you know she's authority. When I have interactions with you, um, we talk about sports, we talk about a lot of things. You don't come off as um, the intimidative type. You know, like you, you, you don't come off as being overly aggressive. And like you say, you come off as laid back. So what I just learned with you saying what you said was that you can... Um, you, you, you can use words to get kids into check or to make kids do something without having to scream at them and without having to be aggressive. Is that, is, is that kind of correct? Um, yes, pretty much, yes. Because once you start yelling, fussing, cussing, all that extra stuff, beating and whipping, most of the time people endure it for the moment and then they figure out, okay, how can I be stronger than this person? Because you, you create an animal type instinct in people once you have to start doing all the overly aggressive stuff. So people start, you know, they turn into animals, you know, mentally, they figure out how can I get in the, in the, in the lion's den and become the king of the jungle if, you know, he's yelling, roaring and all that. What do I got to do to, to roar louder? If it means being more stubborn, and that's what they try to do. And so 
generally try to outsmart a kid because I feel like we're adults. We're supposed to be smarter than kids. Wow. You can actually, um, you can write a book. <laughs> you can write a book on parenting because you, some, some way, somehow you figured this, this parenting thing out almost to like, like to the T. You figured it out and you figured out exactly how to do it. Um, and I know that I am going to learn from you and, and I'm actually going to go back and watch this interview a couple of times um, because I want to, you know, make sure I grasp every single piece of it. So um, what was, what would you say is your, what was your biggest victory um, as a parent? Well, so far, no jail. <laughs> Graduated high school, <laughs> reached 18 alive um, in the military. I mean, those are, those are positive points so far. <laughs> those, those are actually big victories. Do you, do you ever sit down and just um, reflect on it, you know, and say, uh, wow, I, I, I did a good job, you know, as, at, at, at raising? I mean, do you give yourself any credit? I mean, sometimes you think that, but then you like, well, you know, the job's not completely over yet. Because, <laughs> you know, you're a parent, as long as you're alive, you are a parent. You know, once you have children, once you have nieces, nephews, whoever, you're a parent until the end. You know, so my thing is, as long as you can help somebody, you know, you attempt to help if you can. But, I mean, your job's never complete. You know, if you get, you know, once you feel like you're complete, then that means you've given up. So my thing is, why give up? If it's, if it's still somewhere out there to help, then help. Great answer, great answer. So if that's the case, what do you feel your greatest struggle um, has been as a parent then? Do you have any struggles that you? Um... I, I mean, I would say sometimes I'm not, as a parent, I'm not a, aggressive. So I'll talk with you and, you know, try to get, let you make decisions. And that, that was like my, my thing. I'm not one that's going to make you do something because that's what I know you should do. I'm going to try to find a way to make you do make a decision for yourself in some manner. Because if I, if I make the decision for you, I mean, just like with our parents of us and so forth, aunts, uncles, grandparents, if they, we ain't do everything that they wanted us to do. But, you know, if you can kind of allow them to make decisions for themselves, then they can be happy with the decisions they make. And sometimes they won't, they might deviate a little bit, but they won't go but so far off. Yes, yes. So with me, I know um, growing up, my mom, she made a lot of decisions for me. <laughs> um, really, really up until I was probably like 18, she made like a lot of decisions to where I was calling her for, mom, what do I say when I go to a doctor's appointment? You know, or mom, what do I do in this scenario? Mom, how do I um, apply, like fill out this application to, to get this apartment? You know, so I was, she, she, she was really um, doing everything for um, each of her kids. You know, so with you, you say that you allow kids to to make to put them in a position to where they make decisions on their own. Um, is there a certain age that you you start prepping them for that at or or what? Well, I mean, it it starts with if you have them in sports or activities of any any type, then you know you, you kind of lead them towards things and you put them in positions where they have to you know they have to make some decisions. But of course, if it's something a parent, there's parent decisions, there's kid decisions, and kid decisions is. You know, you got to let them play with friends and stuff like that. But every friend ain't going to be the type of friend that you really want them to play with. But you got to yes. teach them how to make good decisions with whoever their friends are. And, you know, you lead them, guide them, and, and let them see you interact with people that ain't, you know, because we all, as adults, we all have friends and family members, some that you can be around and they up, you know, they always on point. Then there's some that's like questionable. But if you shelter your kids from the questionable people, that's, that's, one of the learning lessons that you kind of are keeping from them because them seeing you interact with people that on all levels, whether it be spiritual, whether it be worldly, whether it be work-wise, them seeing how you interact and you know how to keep everybody in the proper box or where they belong, I think it's a benefit to kids. But if they see you treating people wrong, you know, as parents, your kids are watching what you do. So you don't really want to treat people wrong no matter who they are, whether they good people, bad people or whatever. You know, everybody deserves respect. So when your children see you giving everybody respect, the chance is they're going to give respect. If they see you naturally love everybody, they going they they probably will naturally love everybody. You're 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 they're, actually they're, they're correct. Yeah, you're you're correct on that. You have a point because um, I know if my son, well, really with kids, period, kids they watch their parents and they watch every every single detail. 
They watch every move you, you make. And sometimes you're not even uh, paying attention to them watching you. You don't even see them watching you. They might be watching you, you know, from the side or from a distance or something, but they watch everything that you do. So um, my interaction with my son is, um, you know, I like, like I said, I play with him, but then I get, you know, I'm stern with him and, and, and then I keep him out of um, harm's way. So if I see him climbing or something, I'll, you know, tell him to, to um, I'll let him down. Or if I see him, um, you know, running out in the street or something like that, I'll stop him or, you know, trying to play with an electrical socket or something as a young kid, I'll stop him. And so um, I wasn't, um, I wasn't like, I, I, I didn't, I did not know that he was paying attention to everything I, that I was doing. And even my interactions with other people until we moved from North Carolina here to um, Pennsylvania. And here he has a nephew, Evan, that's um, a year younger than him. And the way that he interacts with him, sometimes he acts like how I interact with him. <laughs> Big, so big he'll, he'll, he'll be like, you know, don't do that or um, get down or, you know, be careful or he'll give him a hug, you know. So and, and, and then I'll sit back and I'll be like, wow, he actually learned that from me, you know. So <laughs> so it's almost like I put some fruit into him and then I am seeing the fruit grow. You know, I see, I'm seeing a tree. I planted a seed in it and I'm seeing the, 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 the tree um, grow right in front of my face, you know. Yeah. So. Um, so like, what things did you, um, did you try before um, you learned your actual uh, parenting style um, that worked and, um, and, and some things that, you know, maybe didn't work? Like, were there some things that you tried, like you screamed or you tried to be aggressive? Um, kind of touch bases on that. Well, I mean, I, I never really was, I, I didn't do too much like aggressiveness screaming, but I mean, the few times I'll say with my son where I would get aggressive was, you know, the maybe about a good six or seven times throughout his, say, school, school, where maybe it might have been maybe once in maybe like third grade, maybe once in fifth grade, and then a couple times in middle school and a couple times in high school where he wasn't, he was just doing just barely enough. And I'm just like, barely enough? A B or a C is, why are you getting this? It's like, this is a class you just had an A in. Why, why all of a sudden at progress report time, is it a D or a C showing up? What's going, you know, and I start, you know, doing, you know, what the man does. We start fussing for a couple of minutes and then I I would do it. And, you know, I, once I get started, I would do it for about 10 minutes or whatever. And then after I think, I would sit there and think about it. And I was like, he's like me, he's going to shut down. You can't fuss at us. You can't cuss at us. You can't, you can't do none of the aggressive stuff because mentally, we're, you know, me and my son will completely shut down. We're not hearing nothing once you start doing all that. Like you gotta really just talk and be, you know, just be truthful and honest to, to get there. And then, you know, once I realized, you know, I would do that, and it's probably happened a good five or six times in his life, <laughs> you know. But you know, and then we can sit and talk about it now. And he'd be like, you know, that didn't work. That wouldn't, you know, he's like, I was gonna do what I was gonna do if it was, you know, once you start doing that, because he he knows and you know, I would know. But it was just things, you know, sometimes just the him seeing that side, I think, made our relationship better because he knows. I don't want to be that person. So yeah. for me to sit there and fuss and do all that, I don't want to be that person with you. He knew he knew I didn't want to be that person. And so me and him always had a great relationship because, you know, the few times when I would do that, he would see if he just does what, I, you know, the, the minimum things that I feel all kids should naturally do, yeah. you're not ever going to get that from me. You'll get, no, you know, no, it, it's just, what's no, that? You, go, you, go. you can go ahead. Oh, no, but I was just saying, um, Pretty much that that was just a way where you know our communication worked better when you know we both you know i knew what he needed and he knew what i you know my my expectations and it just blended better and we can sit okay. and talk and laugh about stuff now <laughs> okay so since you um the question i have this is not even a question but it's, it's a good one since you understand and he and he's like you um since you know like what things that can trigger you or him to to shut down um, have there ever been as, as him as a man, has there ever been any time where you had a conversation on, um, what would happen in, in those scenarios if someone else was to, was to kind of trigger that? Do he, you know, like, is that instilled in him to where he knows how to act if someone else triggers something for him to shut down? And it, it, he, he knows how to, because he'll talk about it. Like, you know, we pretty much talk like every weekend normally, you know, with him being uh, stationed down North Carolina, 
And um, he'll say how, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, just being around some of the, the other different people, um, he watches how they, you know, he's not a big, he's not a party or anything. So, you know, he says how sometimes they be bringing alcohol back into the uh, barracks and everything. And he says they get caught. And he said, so pretty much they get shut down. He says, you know, he, he just says how dumb, you know, these are grown men, but they do some of the dumbest things. And he's just sitting there like, that ain't him. You know, he'll, he might go like to other people, you know, some of the people that have their own places, houses, you know, just to be part of the, you know, the soldier, you know, lifestyle, whatever, and just to get off, off base sometimes. But he says, it's just not, he don't need all that, you know, the extra, because he, you know, he just likes to stay under the radar, do what he got to do. And, you know, he, he says his, his thing is he's trying to learn what he can learn and make his money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's actually like, he's, he's really, really a, a good kid. You know, like I could, I could talk um, great things about him. <laughs> you know, I don't really have nothing bad to say about the kid. Sometimes I look at him and be like, man, I, I gotta, you know, he kind of checks me because I'm like, uh, I'm acting immature right now. <laughs> <laughs> when I, when, when, we, when I, we all have our moments. Yeah, we all we have, have our moments. <laughs> so, um, so what advice would you give to a father um, that's having a difficult child, I mean, having a difficult time um, raising a child that might be like disrespectful or, um, or undisciplined. Um, what 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 advice would you give to that father that's having like a difficult time? Well, I mean, I, sometimes I would say check check just watch the surroundings of, of what the child's around, and sometimes it, it could be the parent, it could be the parent, it could be the mother, the father, it could be the grandparents, the other siblings, because they're watching everything that's around them. So generally, they're picking up off of some something somewhere, a television, radio, you know. If, to me, if you, the more time you can spend with your kids, if you can catch them, catch it early enough, then you can probably avoid a lot of that foolishness. But it's really, you know, it's, it's really once you realize that it's headed this direction. Because, uh, I mean, I do have friends that have kids that's like, they have problems with them. I mean, you know, pretty much, are, you know, when kids is already in elementary school and they, they come and have an interaction with police, something's wrong. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's not normal. You know, but when you look at their situations, they have relationships or parent, other parents that already having interactions with the law enforcement, incarcerated, things of that sort. So it's, it's, you already are prepping your children and sometimes you don't even realize if all your so-called best friends are in the system in some manner and your kids are, those are the people you are more free to have your kids around 24 seven. It's at some point you're gonna lose a child here or there. I mean, wow. so it's important really that, you know, you, you want to surround your kids. It's nothing wrong with having your kids around people of all different types. I mean, good, bad, whatever, upper class, lower class, middle class, but you got to always, you got to be there to teach them, you know, that they got to know how to act around all these different people and, and what to pick up off of this group, what to pick up off of this group. There's groups that, you know, if you got to, you know, I believe even if there was a KKK unit, uh, uh, house right beside you and if they invited you in to come there and talk he allow your child children to talk to them because you never know it's something you can even learn from them i mean in you it's something you can teach your child so i mean don't ever look at any situation as a bad thing because i mean your children always need deserve the right to learn see this is why i like talking to you because um as 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 i'm actually as we're having this conversation i am gaining wisdom because um you just opened my eyes to that uh, children are paying attention to the surroundings as well. So they're not just watching you, they're, they, they, they're watching neighbors, you know, and how the neighbors interact. Um, and then um, the, the, the part where they're watching your friends. So some people are having the wrong type of friends over all the time or around them. And then the child is watching that friend, you know, just like what you said, and they're picking up that stuff. So um that would just be a, a advice to other parents to you know kind of gauge and look at who you are um surrounding yourself with and who you're putting your kids around because a parent might not know why their child is acting out right now you know they might not know why they're um all of a sudden getting in trouble or why they all of a sudden um god is kind of get, get, giving me this revelation right now um why why young guys all of a sudden want to join a gang when they come from a two-family household and they saw, you know, mom and dad raised them the right way all of their life, while all of a sudden now they want to join a gang, 
you know, while all of a sudden now they want to pick up guns, while all of a sudden now they want to um, disrespect the adults and, and, and disrespect, you know, the elderly. And um, God is showing me that it's exactly what you're saying. It's a friend that that child is watching that's doing all of those things, you know? So that's where they're picking it up from. And you just, you just really opened, that was like a revelation. You opened my eyes up to that. I, I was not paying the attention to, to that. Fit in. Huh? The desire to fit in. That's yeah, the where desire a lot to of fit kids, in. You know, kids and adults fall into that right now. Yes, 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 you're right. So if there's one thing that um, you could change, um, what would it be? I mean, me, I probably would, uh, I wish I could, <laughs> I'd say, let's see, wish I was just more assertive in doing things that could help situations better, not sitting back, because there's so many things even within the communities and families where, you know, if, if we was more organized, say, within ourselves, you know, because a lot of the stuff that's going on now, I feel like is, is our fault as, as a whole community and society, because, you know, we watch the kids are falling off and we just accept it. Um, our school systems, everybody complains about them, but nobody's on the PTAs. Nobody goes to the city council meetings. Nobody goes, gets involved in the politics to get the right people in offices, on the school boards and so forth. It's like sitting back sometimes we watch things fall apart and but we, yet we complain amongst each other, but we really don't come together to really make things happen to better it. And that's one of the biggest, you know, biggest things. Because even like right now with um, the presidential election, everybody's, you know, complaining about Trump, complaining about Biden. This, uh, I'm voting for the lesser of two evils. Well, I mean, unfortunately, you know, evil is evil. Why would you vote for it? If you say two people's evil, just because one stepped on your toe and one hit you with a hammer, they both evil. <laughs> so yeah, what would be the difference? Evil. What would be the difference? So, I mean, w w the best, best case to me would be get more involved in your local politics and start putting better people in office and grooming them up and hold people more accountable and give them, give them that one term to do what they said they was going to do. And if they don't do what they said they was going to do, then we got to push them out. And I think that's just me. I would say get more involved in the local things and just start fixing things where you can fix them, make your voice heard and start spreading, you know, as much any, any type of good knowledge you can. If there's something you learn that, can help the next person out. Don't be afraid to share. Um, right in this moment, I have to um, shift over into the prophetic because I'm getting a word for you. And um, God is just basically saying that um, people are um, yearning to hear from you. You know, people are um, eager to hear from you. People in your area are um, waiting to for you to stand up. You know, they're waiting. They're, they're, like he has. Um, he has a group of people, abundance of people that are waiting for you. You know, so it's, it's, it's never too late because God's saying that you got a big calling on your life, you know, and um, there's just so many people that need to hear your wisdom. And when you do things um, in the public, people are gonna move. They're gonna almost rally behind you because uh, you, are, um, you are a leader, amongst leaders <laughs> you know so 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 don't think that it's too late um just you know start speaking out start doing whatever you want to do i know we talked um a few months ago about doing a podcast and and, and we're live tonight <laughs> yeah you know so 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 things come to pass but um it's just so much wisdom in you you know that there are people there are parents that need to hear um what you have to say and they're waiting on you you know, so um, that was in the prophetic. Um, so uh, do you, um, do you and your spouse, like, do y'all have the same parenting style or is it different? Are you like bad cop, good cop, or, or, what, or, or what do you think? It's, it's not bad cop, good cop. It's, it's, a little, it's different, but it's not, it's not bad cop, good cop. I mean, like, I mean, we both, you know, believe in, you know, you be friends with the kids in some manner, but it's just, you know, it's just a little bit different. I mean, I would just say, you know, like, I'm not going to bully you into anything because I feel like it's not going to work. I mean, you know, but, it, you know, women and men are totally different. So, I mean, the the woman approach, it, you know, it works for a woman. The man approach, it might work for the man. But w when you find what approach works for you, you just, you, you got to roll with it. And, you know, what's important because in the long run, it's, it's you that 
you got to be happy with the way you're doing things. Because if you're not happy with the way you're doing it, then no matter what you do, it's not going to be, it's not going to work. So um, if that's the case, you know, because uh, with me, what I do is I switch a lot through styles. You know, and I said this earlier, like, so I see myself switching a lot through styles, um, just trying to always gain um, competitive advantage. It's almost like I'm in a warfare or something because <laughs> these kids are smart. <laughs> smart and intelligent, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and, and so, like, they're watching you, and they're like, okay, well, this is how I can be the adult right now. This is how I can get the competitive advantage. And then a lot, a lot of times I find me and I find my wife as well, we're having an argument with a child, you know, like having, having, having like an adult conversation with a child because they have gotten a competitive advantage on us and now they're double teaming us, you know? So, um, so, uh, with, so with you sticking to what you know is best, do you believe that that's good, you know, for, for, for the parent once they figure out one style to stay with it because the children are watching? Is, is, is that what you're kind of saying? I, I do believe that because I mean the, the consistency is what they're looking for. So as long as you're consistent and, and you know there's a line and you can always walk the line. Like if if, if you always tell your kids don't do drugs, don't don't uh, smoke cigarettes and don't drink alcohol and don't you know steal, but then they catch you kind of you know somewhat sometimes doing that because money's tight. So uh, or because I'm out partying. So oh, it's nothing wrong with smoking a cigarette this one time because I'm just I'm out out with my friends having a good time. You know, so your kids are really looking, looking at you and they judging you, you know, they judging you just the way that you probably are judging them. So, I mean, it's important that you, you give them a baseline and you pretty much try your best to stay on that baseline. So, I mean, you know, my son doesn't, he doesn't um, smoke and drink, but I mean, he never told me and I'm not really, you know, I'm not into smoking and drinking, but, you know, I never sheltered him away from people that did do that, but he knows what I didn't do. And I always, you know, let him know that, you know, that's, that's not for me. <laughs> you know why? Because, you know, there's people in my family that had alcohol problems and drug problems. I don't, you know, I don't know, genetically, maybe I might've been the one that got addicted. So that wasn't something I was ever going to be into. You know, when I was younger, you know, I did, you know, I would drink with my friends and stuff like that, but it wasn't, you know, I didn't, yeah. that's not something as, you know, the older I got, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a, that's a, that's an actual great answer. So like, we've just identified, um, once you understand what your style is, kind of stick with it and go with it and roll with it. <laughs> so yeah. you don't get, you know, flip flop for the child, how I am. Um, but is there anything else that you see um, other parents like mistakes that they may be making that like, you um, think that they should can correct? Is there something that you, you think that parent, other mistakes that they make? Well, um, I would say sometimes it's just you can't, parenting. You got to parent yourself. You can't worry about what people are saying about your parenting style and all that. Once you you know something and you feel it works and you stick with it, because no matter what you do, whether it's right or wrong, whether it's how it is, people's always gonna have an opinion. And you can't you you can't really dwell on everybody else's opinion. If you know what you're doing is working and it's right, and you know your child's going in the right path, it's like you stick with it. I mean, sometimes people are going to look and they're going to, they, they going to assume something off of your relationship with your child based on what they think. But if you ain't it's my child or me, how can you really have an opinion of it? You got to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, like sometimes people look at situations and they assume they know what's up between this and that, but they don't have a clue. You know, so you, you establish a relationship with your child, you teach them the right way and, you know, don't sit there and look just because these two parents, they go to Aruba every spring and summer. You feel like, oh, I got to take my bill money and satisfy my child. And we going to Aruba too. No good while well, you don't got Aruba, you know, uh, income. Yeah. You know, sometimes you, you got to find your place and, and your child will be grateful. If they know you work hard and you're giving them the best that you can give them, you communicate with them where you need to communicate. Don't over communicate with a child because they're a child. I mean, children don't need to know everything. <laughs> you know, it's certain, you know, allow a child to live a child life and they won't be stressed. But if you, if you bring them into an adult life, they're going to start getting stressed and it's life gets hard. Hmm. Then they're going to become an adult before their time. Before their, so, before their time. <laughs> how many children do you have? 
Um, I have two birth children and three step children, so five children all together. Okay, how many boys, how many um, girls? Four boys and one girl. Okay, okay, so now I have a question because um, I think you kind of touched bases on it earlier, but this is I, I, it's for me, but I know it's for other people as well. Um, and I, I want some clarity on it. So when you say that you find your style and you stick to it, is every child the same? Do you have the same style for every child and stick with it? Or do you have to find out what style that child needs? Parenting style? More so you need to find out what each child needs. So some, some children are gonna be, need a little bit more attention or a little bit more of this than other children. So as long as you can figure out where each child is, then it, it, it's probably easier. If you try to, you know, you, if you try to treat, you can't treat a girl exactly like a boy because that don't always float, <laughs> you yeah. know, but you can try, but I mean, I don't know if that's really, you know, because, you know, a lot of times little girls are a little bit more sensitive than little boys, you know, things that boys want to do is, is a little bit different than what girls want to do. You can, you can <laughs> buy some Barbie dolls and you can go out and play with, you know, your daughter. And what if you take, you know, Preston and you try to play with some Barbie dolls, he's going to probably start ripping the heads off and you're going to be like, man, I just paid all this money with this. So it's like, you got to find, you know, activities for each person and mentally, emotionally, you know, figure out what works with each person. Yeah. I'm going to actually take that advice because um, what, what I've been doing is uh, I treat and I act the same with each child. And so I haven't been taking the time to see what is the correct style that each child is more receptive to, you know? So it's almost like I'm trying to make them into the same person. And if you look at the school system, you'll see that sometimes that don't work, you know, trying to make, trying to teach everybody the same way. Same, yep. You know, some, so. some people don't fit within that type of um, teaching. And then, you know, you put them outside the box and say that they're, you know, might not be as smart as this person, but they're just not receptive to that type of learning environment. That don't mean that they're not as smart as the other person, but they're just not as receptive. So I just find myself doing that a lot, you know, just um, being the same way towards them. And um, I have yet to see which style works the best for each child. You know, so I'm actually going to moving forward, I will incorporate that as well. So you are, um, like I said, you are giving me wisdom um as an uncle as you as as you speak um so what would you say is the most important um part of being a parent um to a child what, what, what would you say the most important part of being a parent is? i mean just true truly loving them and truly caring and you know just being the best person that you can be and you know allowing them to let them know that no, no matter what you want to be there for them but you know there's greater things in store for you but you just got to put your own effort in you know, I, your effort ain't my effort. My effort ain't your effort, but I can be there for you and I can help support you where I need to, you know, where you need assistance. But, you know, I'm here for advice. I'm here to help you, you know, guide you through the path. But at some point you got to be able to, you know, listen to what I'm saying and, you know, watch how I've walked through some paths and hopefully, you know, you can find a better, better path and your path will be even greater than my path. I think we um we both agree on that. Um, I think for me, the biggest um the most important part to me would be um the love part. Um, just you know, teaching teaching them love and then showing them what love is, and then also showing them to um love their neighbors, you know, as themselves, because what that will do is that will allow them to put others um before them, you know, and 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 that will rule out them wanting to be selfish, you know, and and um just act negative or just think they're better than other people. Um, and then um, the second part would just be instilling wisdom into them um, so that I know at by a certain time when they really go off into the world, they know how to um, handle it and they know how to act in certain environments um, around certain people. And I'm just trying to do all of that now. Um, I'm lucky to have people like you around so that you know, Prescott and Aria, um, my kids um, can see, um, you know, and, 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 and everybody else that's around, they can kind of look up, you know, to the people and see that they have a good foundation. Um, do you believe that the foundation is, 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 um, is another like central part, you know, for the child, like in terms of the household? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Because I mean, you, you you really you want you want the household to really come together in some form. I mean, it's not always you know going to happen, but if everybody can kind of get along, it does make things a lot smoother. Yeah. And you know, in the same right, you know, you want to get along with your neighbors and every everybody. I mean, you shouldn't. It shouldn't really be where you know this is separate, this is separate, and everything just gets harder. I mean, because I mean, if you you got people you ride a school bus with every day for your whole elementary school life, and then you go to middle school, you ride in the same school bus with these kids, and then you get to high school, and you act like you never knew these kids the whole your whole life. I mean, but y'all was riding the same school bus for eight years, you know, and it's like it's so much where there's indifference because a lot of people don't. There's no togetherness at all. You know, people's always, always, it's it's a world where everybody's about self. It's like, what can you do for me, but not what can I do for you? And if, you know, if we all had like a a, a carpenter or separate mentality where we wanted to help and not, you know, wasn't taken, you know, it, unfortunately, that's what one of the downfalls I feel of society right now. And then, you know, yeah, well, kids look. <laughs> well, um, you know, the, the the whole Corbett thing hit and we're still going through it. So that has kind of, um, from what I see from just a world perspective, that has kind of shifted um, eyes back onto the family, you know, to where the family is starting to do more things at home with each other, um, playing games or um, having, you know, uh, having uh, discussions, having yeah. conversations, um, sitting at the table, actually eating dinner together there. So, so now, just because of this, this virus, they're starting to do things that um, we were really getting away from, you know, and 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 creating that environment at the house um, that the children really, really need, you know. Yeah. And so, um, what like uh, have you have you been having? Because I know you have a younger child. Like, have you been having um, any issues with the whole Corbett? Like, in terms of um, maybe it putting the uh, making the child depressed or creating some stress and anxiety because they can't be in school. Have you been having any issues with, with, um, with that? And if so, how are you dealing with it? Well, the, I think one of the biggest problems with the COVID right now with um, the school, you know, is the, the kids aren't, the kids really do need the school, but it's not, I don't think it, it's, I wouldn't want the schools at the sake of risk and health or anything, but I think the kids are, are lacking because you know, we do underappreciate teachers and um, our school systems at times. And, you know, they aren't appreciated the way they probably should be appreciated. But a lot of these kids, they need that that form of structure because unfortunately in the homes, we don't create educational structure that's needed for the kids to be successful. You know, so kids that they might struggle with their English at home because they're going on a laptop right now. But if they was in a classroom setting where the teacher kind of was walking around every now and then, you know, calling them to the desk and working with them, it, it would make it easier on the kids. Because, you know, unfortunately, you know, when you're home, you don't know something, you can kind of, you know, be like, oh, I don't know how to do that and kind of shut it down. But when you're in a school, you know, you don't know how to do something. You got to, you know, you got to, it takes a lot for the teacher to just leave you be and let you not still work on it. And then your pride alone, even the things you don't know how to do, you'll figure out how to do it enough to at least pass this pass whatever the project is you got to pass. You know, yes, so yes, I think I, you know, it's it's harder with the kids being home, and you know, they're, they're, they are losing out on some of that because, you know, they they get you know you get the emails from the teachers saying that the child didn't do this or didn't do that, and it's like, what are you going to do? You're the parent. You at you at work. How do you, how do you fix that? You start fussing, cussing, yelling, <laughs> wanting to come home and you know rip down everything, take away everything. Well, they still gonna be home and ain't gonna change nothing. Because at that point, if the child isn't doing something, you can't make them do something at that point. Because they, in their mind, they they they're determined to shut down. Yes, so I, I know. Like cool um, work. I know with us, we uh we have to um, homeschool Aria right now, and so <clears throat> what it has shown me and Kashmira is the teachers have to deal with a lot, you yeah. know? Not, so, so, so not only are they really being teachers in that classroom, they're really being parents as well, you know? So you have to um, kind of regulate everybody's uh, emotions. You know, you got to quiet the class down and then you got to make sure that everybody's doing their work. 
So just, just being home with Aubrey and homeschooling her um, just gave me a new respect um, for teachers and how much they got to go through and endure and, and, and just to be that profession. Um, it's serious. Uh, so um, the last question I have for you is um, when I listen to you talk, I see that there's some type of discipline structure that um, you are pulling from. So how do parents um, establish discipline in the house? You know, like what, like do, do, do you create like some type of um, structure that the kids got to abide by, like some type of, um, what I'm trying to say, like some type of calendar, you do this this hour, you do this this hour. Like how do parents, how would you recommend parents create some type of discipline structure in the household? Well, I mean, a lot, a lot of this going to have to start within yourself. You can't really, I don't think you can create discipline for a child if you haven't yet created anything for yourself. Like, because if you know you got things that you should be doing, but if a child sees you sitting back chilling and you want to watch TV, but you still had this to do, if they see you putting off important stuff for later, then they're going to probably put off important stuff for later. And I think if you start with the children, like at a younger age, you know, whether it just be the simple things of just reading a little bit or, you know, just have have some periods in, in, in a day where the children have to do, do something constructive. You can't just let them just exist because, you know, if they just exist then it's going to be video games. It's going to be sleeping. It's going to be going out and playing with their friends. And then the whole summer went by. They didn't ever pick up a book. They didn't ever, you know, they don't ever study. You know, I think it's important that parents start to, you know, you got to get your kids in the habit of actually trying to learn something daily. You know, and it could be something as simple as just, just learn one word that you didn't know. You know, if you can figure out how to get your child to really open up a book or uh, color something, do something that uh, teach them something, maybe show them a piece of artwork and then talk to them about it if, if that's something you can do. You know, because it's always something that they can learn on. And, and like when I was a kid, I really didn't, I hated reading. You know, but, and it wasn't necessarily reading because I've read the newspaper, but I only read the sports section and then the entertainment section. And I would do, read it every single day. And I'm talking about from third or eight on, I've read the sports section every single day from front to back. <laughs> but the thing was, I realized I, when we got to like, you know, having to write papers, I hated writing papers, but I knew as long as it was, I was writing on a sports book or something about sports, I could bang it out. Hmm. And then, so, I pretty much did that until I got to high school. And then it took a while. And then the, when the teachers started realizing that, they started making me write off. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't let me write from what I wanted to. And then all of a sudden, I was in my struggle mode again. You know, so it was, it's just one of them things where you just got to figure out, find something at a young age that gets them interested in something. You know, so whatever they're interested in, you know, get their, ed, you know, feed off of that for their educational goals. And if you can get them interested in enough to to want to do it, then once they get to a, you know, like their high school, their fundamentals is there. And even if they got to write about something they don't necessarily want to write about, their fundamentals is already there and they can still write about something or they can still do, do things. So, I mean, it's just important. And I think reading and math is like the two most important things you can ever get your kids to, you know, to learn. And most people struggle with those two things. It's either, they're either good with reading or they're good with math, but it's hard to find the kids that's good with both. And I always tell people, me personally, I want to know how to read because I don't want nobody getting over on me. And I don't, I, I got to be good with my math because I like money. So I don't want nobody being able to cheat me out of, even if it's 50 cents, it's my 50 cents. I don't want you to cheat me out of it. But I mean, I'm the, I'm the person that you can give me an extra dollar when I go through your line. And, I'll, and once I realize it, I'm going to come back to, and I'm going give, to give that dollar back to you because I didn't earn that dollar. I don't want your dollar if I didn't earn it. Jamal, that was um such a, I'm gonna call you Uncle Jamal. That was such a great <laughs> um word of advice. And I mean, you touched on it so good to where uh I think that you know that's where we're going to conclude. Um yeah. I've really asked all the questions, and I think like when a lot of people go back and listen to this, they're going to see that there's so much fruit and there are so many different things that. Um, you've covered tonight that they could begin to implement as parents and they will see that um, it will have a lasting and a positive effect on the children. Um, it's a lot of things that I've learned myself, but um, 
the reason why I want to conclude on this is I want to leave every every parent with 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 a a, a word that you just said. Um, the discipline starts with you. So the discipline starts with you as a parent. You know, so if you can begin to become more disciplined, the child is watching you. And so if the child sees that the parent is disciplined, then the child over time will become disciplined and it's just a way of life for them. So once again, for parents, if you're having some issues with your children, like Jamal said, the discipline starts with you and it starts with them. Uh, once again, um, Jamal, um, I thank you for um, being on tonight and, and, and sharing your, um, your wisdom and your advice um, to the world. Uh, everyone else, um, just tune in every fourth Friday of each month. Loving Our Children will be doing a, a men's talk um, and we will get deep and we will you know, share advice um, to the world and, and hopefully it can help parents um, as well as um, children. But once again, thank you, Jamal. And I'm no Andrew. Problem. Thank Mom. you, Drew.